India is one of the fastest growing economies in the entire world. However, it also has a high national debt. The data as recorded by the debt to GDP is over 87%. That is one of the highest in the developing world. It's even higher than China, which has a debt to GDP of 77.1%. This raises the alarming question, is India's government rather inefficient in managing its fiscal responsibilities, or are there other factors at play contributing to this high debt level? To understand this, we must understand why India has a high debt to GDP. The first is through the government's ambition. When Prime Minister Narendra Modi came into office in 2014, the debt to GDP of the country was 66.5%. By 2018, it rose to 70.5%, and by 2019, to 75%. These are figures from before the COVID-19 pandemic. As we all know, the pandemic wreaked havoc on the global economy, forcing many nations, including India, to borrow money. However, even before COVID-19, India already has a rising debt to GDP. This can be attributed to one big factor, Narendra Modi's ambitiousness. When Prime Minister Modi came into office, he initiated various infrastructure projects like the Smart Cities Mission and the Bharat Mala Road Development Program. These initiatives required significant financial resources, which partly explains the increasing debt. The Smart Cities Mission, for instance, aimed at developing 100 cities across the country into smart cities with modern amenities and technology. On the other hand, the Bharat Mala project was about enhancing road connectivity and quality across India. These projects, while necessary for long-term economic growth, resulted in substantial expenditures. Part of Modi's plans was the implementation of the demonetization policy in 2016. The abrupt decision to render high-value currency notes invalid was intended to curb corruption and black money. However, this move led to a temporary economic slowdown and a disruption in the informal sector which significantly contributed to the Indian economy. The adverse economic impact of the demonization likely played a role in the increased government borrowing in subsequent years. Modi and his government borrowed money to fund these projects and schemes. This then, as the government expects it to do, translates into economic growth. That can partly be why India's economy has been expanding rapidly since he came into office. Infrastructure and government spending has been helping record 7 to 8 percent GDP GDP growth annually. Now, of course, Modi's infrastructure and schemes are not the sole reasons. There have been articles stating that the significant increase in government spending over the past decade is linked to rising military expenditure. But it makes sense to spend on its military, as the country has its own geopolitical challenges. Let's now look at the risk that comes into play when the government borrows too much money. One primary concern is the potential for increasing national debt. As the government borrows more, the debt burden grows, which can have several long-term economic consequences. High levels of debt can lead to increased interest rates, as lenders demand higher returns for the increased risk. This can, in turn, make borrowing more expensive not only for the government, but also for the private sector entities, potentially slowing down private investment and economic growth. Another risk is the possibility of misallocation of resources. When large amounts of funds are funneled into projects, there's always a risk that these projects may not yield the expected returns. This could be due to various factors, such as poor project planning and execution, corruption, or changes in global economic conditions. Such misallocation can result in white elephant projects, expensive investments that are not economically viable. This not only wastes public resources, but can also lead to economic imbalances where certain sectors are overemphasized at the expense of others. Additionally, there's the risk of inflation. Large-scale government spending, especially when funded by borrowing, can lead to an increase in the overall demand in the economy. If this increased demand outpaces the economy's ability to produce goods and services, it can lead to inflation. Inflation erodes the purchasing power of consumers and can have a particularly adverse effect on the lower and middle income segments of the population. The dependence on borrowed funds also exposes the economy to external risks, global financial conditions, changes in interest rates in international markets, and shifts in investor sentiment can have a direct impact on the cost and availability of borrowing. In a worst case scenario, a sudden stop in capital inflows or a significant rise in global interest rates can lead to a financial crisis. 
As India continues to borrow, risk will continue to rise. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, has warned that India's general government debt may exceed 100% of GDP in the medium term, largely due to the need for significant investment to improve resilience against climate stresses and natural disasters. The IMF advises ambitious fiscal consolidation to curb public debt. Contrary to the IMF's warning, the Indian government argues that sovereign debt risks are limited as the debt is predominantly denominated in domestic currency. Despite various economic shocks over the past two decades, India's public debt-to-GDP ratio has remained relatively stable. And further on India's debt from international institutions is from Moody's Investor Service. They state that there hasn't been a significant improvement in India's debt affordability to warrant a reconsideration of the country's sovereign ratings upgrade. A large portion of the union budget is devoted to servicing interest payments, which underscores the continuing challenge of debt affordability in India. While Moody's notes that India's fiscal consolidation trend remains intact, it emphasizes the need for more proactive measures in revenue generation to achieve the 4.5% fiscal deficit target by 2025 or 26. The government government's fiscal consolidation, mainly through expenditure management, could be challenging. However, India's economic growth is seen as robust, which should aid in sustaining momentum in areas such as revenue generation. The Indian government is expected to reduce its budget gap to 5.1% of GDP in 2024 and 2025. Another critic, coming from the Congress party, has raised serious concerns about the nation's growing debt under the Modi government. They allege that India's debt has almost tripled to 155 lakh crore rupees over the nine years of Modi's tenure, marking a significant increase from the 55 lakh crore debt in 2014. The Congress spokesperson attributed this surge in debt to what they describe as Modi government's economic mismanagement, which they claim has led to high prices, inflation, high unemployment, and a massive debt burden. The Congress party has called for a white paper on the state of the economy to address these concerns. Additionally, they pointed out the disparities in GST payments, with the bottom 50% of the population owning only 3% of the country's wealth, paying a substantial portion of the GST, while the wealthiest 10% pay a much smaller percentage. The Congress also expressed concern over the debt-to-GDP ratio, which they claim has risen to 84%, higher than the average for developing and emerging market economies. On the other side of the argument, Prime Minister Modi has positioned India as a future growth powerhouse, underscoring the nation's potential and progress under his leadership. He has emphasized India's evolving economic narrative and the efforts being made to bolster its position as a global economic player. Despite the criticisms and the data presented by the opposition, Modi's focus seems to be on long-term economic strategies and infrastructure development that he believes will ultimately benefit the country. Now, before we end the video, let's discuss how India can lower its overall debt. The first and most important is to just grow the economy faster. If the Indian economy grows faster than the overall debt, then it will shrink. The second is to improve government revenues. This can be achieved through reforming tax systems to ensure better compliance and broadening the tax base which includes tapping into sectors that are currently undertaxed or not taxed at all. This is a big reason why India's debt is so big. It's because there is still a huge amount of people going around the country that are not able to pay their taxes. The country must minimize evasion and even potentially increase tax rates. One should not forget that India's tax rate is very small. For the financial year 2024 to 2025, the highest individual tax is 30%. Compare that to European or developed nations with more than 50%. If India were to increase their tax rates, it would increase government revenues and enable India to rely less on debt. But there are downsides to that. If India were to raise taxes, then that very money, which would have gone to the pockets of normal citizens, would disappear. This could potentially lead to decreased consumer spending, which is a key driver of economic growth. Higher taxes might also deter foreign investment as companies and investors often seek regions with favorable tax environments to maximize their profits. Additionally, the burden of increased taxes could disproportionately affect middle-class families, leading to decreased savings and financial strain. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.